You may want to whip out your iPad, especially if it's the new Pro M4, because I got a bunch of powerful, slick tips and tricks for you guys. Let's go. Like, let's start off with some pro tips. And the first one's got to do with the camera that basically now comes with a built-in scanner. So let's say you've got a document or anything you'd like to quickly take a scan of. On the iPad Pro, if you hold down onto the notes icon and choose to scan a document, the iPad's new AI document scanner will do a quick scan of it. And if you open it up, you'll see that it literally looks like you used an actual scanner. That's pretty pro. Then onto the next pro trick, and this is such a useful one because it's basically getting any application on your iPad. So let's say you open up WhatsApp web in Safari, then scan the QR code with your phone to log in. Once you've logged in, if you actually tap on the share icon and then tap on add to home screen, bam, just like that, you've got a non iPad app like WhatsApp on your iPad and you can use it just like you normally would to send and receive messages from it. And you can also do this with other websites too. So if there are ones that you visit a lot, like Gemini, for example, where you can ask it anything you want, or maybe it's your favorite website and you just want a quick shortcut to that on your home screen. Then you know how this is like the most powerful tablet in the world, but it still doesn't come with a calculator app? Well, it actually kind of does, but it's hidden inside the search spotlight. So in the search bar, type out your sum like what is three plus 30, and it'll show you exactly how many iPad tricks are in this video. And if you thought that trick was hidden, then did you know that you can actually connect two AirPods to the iPad? First, just make sure that your AirPods are connected. And for the other pair, just make sure your friend opens them up near your iPad and instantly it'll ask you if you want to temporarily share the audio. Then once they're connected and hooked up, just click done. And now you and a friend can just kick back and watch some movies or listen to some music and share that audio. Nice. Oh, hi, Mark. And if you're wondering what you can do with the new Apple Pencil Pro, then I've got some pro tricks for you at the end. Okay, so let's not lie, the iPad Pro is a powerhouse. And there are four multitasking tricks that'll take your productivity to the next level. Starting off with the control center, where if you tap on the stage manager icon, you can turn it on. Now, a stage manager might seem a little confusing at first, but believe me, it really is the ultimate way to multitask on the iPad Pro. And how it works is pretty simple. So when you open up an app, you'll see that it now has a window. So you can resize it from the corner and make it big or small. But then if you open another app, the one you had opened will get tucked into the side over here. But if you drag and drop it over the existing app, both apps will be grouped into one screen. Then if you tap on these three dots, this little menu will pop up where you can choose to make the apps full screen like you would on a desktop computer, or you can actually minimize them. Or you could also choose to turn off Stage Manager. And if you tap on these three little dots again, you'll now see you can actually choose to have it in split screen mode. So if you prefer this instead, you can just have the two apps open side by side. You can also adjust the window size, which is nice and easy. Okay, now everyone with an iPad needs to know these hidden gestures. And the first one is actually hidden inside the keyboard. So typing with this massive keyboard can feel a bit odd, but the trick is if you swipe in with both fingers from either side, this will shrink the keyboard and also make it float around so you can place it pretty much anywhere on the screen. So cool. Then next, if you have a few apps open in full screen, did you know that instead of swiping up into recent and then navigating to the other apps like this, you can actually just use four fingers to quickly swipe and switch between any apps you've got open. I mean, that's pretty handy. <laughs> then for this next gesture trick, and this one's hidden in plain sight. If you're busy browsing the web, then swipe from the bottom right hand corner, you'll actually open up a quick note where you can then tap on add link and it'll kind of bookmark that web page for you in the notes app. Or if you haven't find any text you want to copy, all you got to do is select it. Then from the bottom right hand corner, swipe up again. And now you can just drag and drop that text into a quick note. Then as for the left hand side corner, did you know you can just swipe up to take a screenshot? And this one's pretty neat because if you then open up that screenshot, you can actually choose to make it a full page by just tapping on this button. So it'll literally save this entire web page for you as a screenshot, which you can then go and open up in the Photos app, which is actually really useful. 
So this iPad Pro is a beast, but a lot of people don't really know how to quickly share from it. Like with this little trick, where if you select any text, you can actually just pinch in with three fingers to copy it. And then if you go on your iPhone and open an app like Notes, for example, and pinch out with three fingers, it'll actually paste that text from your iPad. This also works with a Mac as well. So if you select a bunch of text or anything and tap copy, then tap Command V to paste it, the bam, it happens in a couple of seconds. But if you want to share things from the iPad to literally anything else like an Android phone or PC, then you've got to check this out. In the App Store, if you search for an app called Local Send, here's what it looks like and download that to your iPad, but then also open it up on the other device you want to send something to. You can then select media from your iPad, whether it's images, notes or documents. Then all you got to do is tap the other device's name and instantly it'll start transferring all those files in a matter of seconds. But now, let's jump into some customization tips. So the basic iPad Pro setup isn't too bad, but we can make it look a lot better. And to do that, we gotta start off with a lock screen. And the first thing I always like to do is grab a good picture. You can actually use live images, but I thought this one looked cool. And I love that it actually blocks a portion of the clock, which speaking of, if you tap on the clock, there's a few different things you can do with it, like choosing a different font as well as adjusting the thickness. But something I personally like to do is get the perfect color for the clock. And a lot of people have no idea you can click this color picker icon and actually choose a shade from your wallpaper, which is really nifty. Then once all that is done, I'd suggest you add some widgets and there's a lot of cool ones like the date, time, some battery widgets, weather stats and even your reminders. And now that the lock screen is looking good, let's move on to the home screen. Which again, I personally like to set a custom wallpaper for, like this one, which is bright, but also simple. But this next trick actually shrinks everything on your home screen to get more space. And it's so simple to do. If you head into your display settings and scroll down, then tap on display zoom and change it to more space, it'll minimize the size of all your apps to give you more space. And another thing I really love to do is if you tap on the widgets menu and actually open up a photo widget, if you swipe all the way to the right hand side, you can add an album widget. And what this lets you do is if you tap and hold down on it, you can actually select exactly what album you want to display. So I like to do one with a bunch of different affirmations in it. And this just gives your home screen such a vibe. Then this is pretty well hidden, but inside your dock, if you tap and drag any app onto another app, you can actually make app folders. And it's always good to try and group the apps in their categories like music, for example. And this way you can have your home screen clean with all the apps neatly tucked away in the dock. Nice. Now onto some nice and quick iPad Pro tips. Did you know that if you ever wanna quickly undo something, you can just shake your iPad, this message will pop up, click undo and voila. I mean, it is kinda of silly shaking such a huge tablet, but it can come in really handy if you quickly wanna undo something on your home screen. Then for the next little quick tip, did you know that if you tap and drag something like a picture from one app, for example, then with the other finger actually open another app like WhatsApp, you can drop those pictures straight into that app. And you can also do this for text. So you can just tap and highlight whatever you'd like to copy, then tap and hold it. And with your other finger, open the other app like messages, then let go. And just like that, it is pasted in. And even though this iPad Pro comes with some pretty good battery life, I'd suggest that inside settings, if you scroll down and tap on battery settings, then battery health, you actually turn on this 80% limit option, which basically means that whenever you plug your iPad into charge, it'll only charge up to 80%. And believe it or not, that'll actually give your iPad a few extra years of life whenever you plug it in. But what else can you plug into it? So there's a few ways we can connect to the iPad to make it even better. And the first way is if you get one of these USB-C to HDMI adapters, which are actually pretty affordable, you can use this to plug into an external display and then into your iPad. This will instantly mirror your iPad and show exactly what you're doing just on a bigger screen, which is so cool, but you can make it even better by heading into settings, then under multitasking and gestures, if you tap on this external display tab, then toggle on stage manager, you guessed it, you now have an external display where you can then also add a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard by swiping down on the control center and opening up the Bluetooth settings. Then just tap on your two devices to quickly pair them. And now this feels so much more like a MacBook than an actual iPad. But one of the coolest things you can plug into this iPad is 
an SSD. So instead of buying an iPad with more storage, you can just attach an SSD straight into that USB-C slot. And you can use it straight away on your iPad, accessing files or whatever it is you want, pretty much exactly how you would on a laptop. Now that's really nifty. <laughs> but now let me show you some sick tricks you can do with these bad boys. So the new Magic Keyboard pretty much turns the iPad into a laptop and there's actually a bunch of sweet key combinations you can do with it. There are literally so many that you would never remember them all, but on the keyboard, if you press and hold down the command key, you'll see this keyboard shortcuts list pop up that changes depending on what app you're in. So if you're in settings, for example, and press command option D, this will hide and show the dock. But in another app like YouTube, for example, you'll see a different list of shortcuts that specifically specific for that app. Another little trick you can do with a keyboard is if you have a few apps opened, you can swipe on the trackpad with four fingers to quickly switch between them, literally just like on a laptop. And while we're talking about the trackpad, inside your general settings and trackpad settings, turn on tap to click. Because now instead of clicking to select something, you can just tap the trackpad and it'll do the same thing. But now let me show you some sweet tricks you can do with the Apple Pencil Pro. So the brand new Apple Pencil Pro is like the ultimate tool for the iPad Pro. You can draw with it, of course you can take notes, but you can also do some sweet gestures. Like this new squeeze gesture that activates different menus in different apps. This actually makes navigating so much faster, but what you might not have known is if you go into pencil settings, then open up the squeeze section. If you tap on shortcuts, you'll see this section open, where if you tap on it, as you can see, there are a bunch of different ones you can choose from, like the timer, for example. And now, whenever you squeeze the Apple Pencil Pro, the timer will pop up. So cool. Or you can even set it to open up an application like Spotify, for example. But besides those gestures, if you ever make a mistake while writing or drawing, to quickly undo it, just swipe left with three fingers and the bam, it'll vanish. To redo, just swipe right for three fingers and it'll come back again. And speaking of writing, back inside the pencil settings, make sure to have scribble turned on because with this on, you can literally scribble in any text box on the iPad and it'll automatically turn that into text for you. But the pencil doesn't end there because I still got two more super pro tricks for it. Now for the first pro trick, and this one is so next level, because you can actually use your Apple Pencil Pro on your Mac. Just check this out. On your Mac, if you go into the control center, then tap on screen mirroring and select the iPad, then make sure to select mirror built-in display. And now you'll see that your iPad is actually connected to your Mac and mirroring its screen. Then what you can do is open any application like Photoshop, for example. And now just like that, you can draw in Photoshop on your MacBook with your iPad. Plus, you can do this with any other app. Then for my second pro trick, and this is something everyone with an Apple Pencil has got to do, inside the Find My app, make sure to select this plus icon, then choose to add pencil, and you'll see it'll prompt you to just snap the pencil to your case to add it. It's literally that simple. So now, if you ever lose it, just go into the Find My application, tap on Apple Pencil Pro, then select Find. This distance graphic will pop up, and then you can use your iPad or iPhone to find exactly exactly where you left it. So neat. The iPad should be getting a big software update soon, so make sure you subscribe to see some more of that. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Toodles!